What's your favourite virtue? Courage. What vice do you most despise? Bigotry. What are you most willing to forgive? Gluttony. What's your most marked characteristic? I'm a trier. What are you most afraid of? Losing someone I love. I'd had a short and really quite catastrophic marriage and I'm left with this baby and I've got to get this baby back to Britain and I've got to rebuild us a life. And adrenaline kept me going through that and it was only when I came to rest that it hit me <laughs> what a complete mess I had made of my life. And that hit me quite hard. We were as skint as you can be without being homeless. In other words, we were existing entirely on benefits. And at that point, I was definitely clinically depressed. And that's just characterised for me by a numbness, a coldness, and an inability to believe that you will feel happy again or that you could feel light-hearted again. It's just uh, all the colour drained out of life, really. Dementors are among the foulest creatures that walk this earth. They infest the darkest, filthiest places. They glory in decay and despair. They drain peace, hope and happiness out of the air around them. Get too near a Dementor and every good feeling, every happy memory will be sucked out of you. Depression is a, it, tr clinical depression is a, is, a, is, a, is a terrible place to be, terrible place to so be. So you became depressed after your mother died? Yes. But I think it was a kind of delayed... I think I had tendencies mm -hmm. towards depression from quite young. Mm -hmm. It became really acute um, when I was sort of uh, 25 to 28. Uh, w w w was a very was a dark time. Mm -hmm. Poverty entails fear and stress and sometimes depression. It means a thousand petty humiliations and hardships. Climbing out of poverty by your own efforts, that is something on which to pride yourself. But poverty itself is romanticized only by fools. What I feared most for myself at your age was not poverty, but failure. So the most important thing about that speech, I think, first of all, you talked about how rock bottom became the foundation from yeah. which you rebuilt your life. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing was about how to use failure. Failure. Failure is so important. It doesn't get spoken about enough. We speak about success all the time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I do not know any... I haven't met, and I've been so fortunate and met extraordinary people through Harry Potter, and not one of them didn't have their failure, uh, their more than one failure. And it's the ability to resist, to resist failure in many ways, or use failure, that often leads to the greatest success, isn't it? So, yeah, failure. Mm -hmm. I've often met people who, who um, are t terrified, you know, in, in a straitjacket of their own making because they'd rather do anything than, than fail. They don't want to try for fear of failing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the rock bottom thing. Rock bottom wasn't fun at all. I'm not going to romanticise rock bottom. Now, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that failure is fun. That period of my life was a dark one. And I had no idea that there was going to be what the press has si since represented as a kind of fairy tale resolution. I had no idea then how far the tunnel extended, and for a long time, any light at the end of it was a hope rather than a reality. So why do I talk about the benefits of failure? Simply because failure meant a stripping away of the inessential. I stopped pretending to myself that I was anything other than what I was and began to direct all my energy into finishing the only work that mattered to me. Had I really succeeded at anything else, I might never have found the determination to succeed in the one arena where I believed I truly belonged. I was set free because my greatest fear had been realized and I was still alive and I still had a daughter whom I adored and I had an old typewriter and a big idea. And so rock bottom became the solid foundation on which I rebuilt my life. You might never fail on the scale I did, but some failure in life is inevitable. It is impossible to live without failing at something, unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all, in which case you fail by default. 
God, that's mad. <laughs> this was a tip when I lived here. Oh, look, Harry Potter books. Now, that is really freaky. And for years now, I felt like if it all disappeared, and some days I do feel like it, is it real? Then this is where I would come back to, you know, this would be my baseline, I'd be back in Leith. And obviously, if I'd known that 10 years, well, what was it, yeah, 10 years on, I'd come back here with a film crew <laughs> and there would be my published books in someone else's bookcase in this room. I mean, it's really incredible to me. It really did, I mean, yes. Because it's such a well-worn part of my story now, it's a big yawn to hear how I wrote it, and as though it was all some sort of publicity stunt I did for a year. But it was my life, and it was very hard. And I didn't know there was going to be this fairy tale resolution. And I, I, coming back here is just full of ghosts. One of the many things I learned at the end of that classics corridor, down which I ventured at the age of 18, in search of something I could not then define, was this, written by the Greek author Plutarch. What we achieve inwardly will change outer reality. That is an astonishing statement and yet proven a thousand times every day of our lives. It expresses in part our inescapable connection with the outside world, the fact that we touch other people's lives simply by existing. But how much more are you likely to touch other people's lives? Your intelligence, your capacity for hard work, the education you have earned and received give you unique, unique status and unique responsibilities. Even your nationality sets you apart. The great majority of you belong to the world's only remaining superpower. The way you vote, the way you live, the way you protest, the pressure you bring to bear on your government has an impact way beyond your borders. That is your privilege and your burden. If you choose to use your status and influence to raise your voice on behalf of those who have no voice, if you choose to identify not only with the powerful but with the powerless, if you retain the ability to imagine yourself into the lives of those who do not have your advantages, then it will not only be your proud families who celebrate your existence, but thousands and millions of people whose reality you have helped change. We do not need magic to transform our world. We carry all the power we need inside ourselves already. We have the power to imagine better.